everyone, Simon here. Solomon returns. So many of you have asked me to continue the story of Solomon. He'd had his hedonistic holiday, he'd got himself a girlfriend, gone back to the UK, uh, and then broke up with the Thai girlfriend, finding out that she had plenty of other foreigners on her books. So, back in the UK, Solomon jumped into, as I said before, he was in the driving. He actually had a taxi and he owned his taxi. At the time he was in rented accommodation. So he had his time in Thailand. Had he got it out of the system? Well, he sort of had. Then, uh, fate stepped in again. Seemed to be always pushing him towards Thailand or something to do with Thailand. And he was working nights, pretty much every night in his taxi, making reasonably good money in those days. Um, and just by chance, one evening, a Thai girl came along and got in his taxi. And this Thai girl was an escort. So quite a high-end escort. So she would be going to customers who would be paying for her services for hours or for evening, for the night, for going to galas, events, just someone on their arm, all these sorts of things. And on this night, Solomon took this Thai girl um, it was a reasonable distance, something like 25 kilometers, and got chatting, as you do. Um, and they got on really well. Now, with the taxi industry, if you get a good customer, you always give them your details, and hopefully they'll come back and use you again. With this escort, um, he dropped her off at a rather swanky hotel. Um, and she indicated that she wasn't going to be uh, at a, a long event um, and that she would pay him which was great for a taxi driver to actually stay in the area um, for a couple of hours if needed and that she would ring him and could he collect her and take her to uh, her home later of course Solomon's fine with that and a few hours go by and gets the phone call goes back to this swanky hotel picks up this girl and takes her back to the town he's working in but this time he took her back to her to a house and it wasn't in a very good area of the house but he, he dropped her off and she paid him really well not only did she pay him for both journeys and paid him more than the normal going rate. She also paid him handsomely for the waiting time. Now, when you get jobs like that, it's it's like winning the lottery as a taxi driver. So it's like a, a night's pay, a whole night's pay for one job. That was great. Anyway, a couple of days later, he gets a phone call from the same girl again asking if he could pick her up from that house again off to a swanky hotel way to bring her back and this this actually happened started happening every night every other night and after a couple of weeks um, he was getting really friendly with the girl you know they're on first name terms and chatting away the girl asked him whether he would like to look after a couple of other girls that she works with. Well, okay, of course, you're not gonna say no to, to free money. And <clears throat> that she'd call him and it'd be similar things, possibly wait and return as we call it. Um, possibly not, it could be one way trips. So next evening, phone call from that girl. No, no, I'm not gonna mention any names, but phone call from that girl, girl A, 
Could he come to the house, pick up girl B, and do the same sort of trips? And he did. Another Thai girl. Again, really pretty girl. Not as chatty, but still chat a bit and did the job. Later on, collected her, put her back. Took her back to the house. And girl A was constantly ringing. And then girl C, three of them. And this girl was really chatty and very friendly and younger. Um, and she seemed to be, um, she would, you would, he would drop her off at a hotel and it would be late, early morning, sort of five, six in the morning, phone call would come to pick her up. Um, maybe a slightly different escort. But he did, it was, that was just a journey there and a journey back. Didn't get waiting time for sort of eight, ten hours. It was a shame. So suddenly three girls, escorts, working from a property. Um, and this went on for a couple of months. And they all became more and more friendly. Um, to the stage where these escorts were obviously earning a lot of money. Um, they started using Solomon more and more and more every day and night and it was getting too many hours so Solomon had to bring a friend in at that point and again we won't mention names to help so one would well they'd manage day and night running these girls all over the place even some long trips you know they'd go up to uh, a couple of them would go up to London for the weekend so it'd be take them up to London and after the weekend bring them back great great money and this went on two three four months uh, Solomon and his friend driving these girls all over the place and they started building a relationship a bond um, where Solomon started going into the house where they lived and they'd feed him and the other driver and get cups of tea and coffee and even to the point where he was, Simon was hardly taxing, he was just looking after these girls. Um, worked out all the situation. And he'd go to their house in the early evening and they'd feed him and, tea, and he'd spend the night at the house running the girls backwards and forwards and, he, and his friend. And they'd just be staying at the house and quite often be sleeping on the floor or sometimes for a few hours here and there. Um, anyway, this went on. And the girls started taking Solomon and his friend out in one night here and there as sort of minders. And they'd go to a nightclub or a pub and things and, you know, Solomon wouldn't have to drive. They'd get another taxi friend to take them and so get drunk with Solomon. This, this went on and on and on. And remember, he was trying to get Thailand out of his head. Um, now, where he stepped over the line a bit was... Sometimes you'd, he'd take a girl to a hotel and come back and it was really late and they didn't want to stay in the house. They started ending up staying at Solomon's place. And that happened more and more. Um, not so much at uh, his friend's house, I don't believe. His friend tended to stay at that house. But yeah, and Solomon got very friendly with all three girls over time. <laughs> um, we'll leave, that, leave it at that. But overall, maybe a year, and seriously, seriously good money. You know, I'd work in nights, it was, it was a good night's pay, if not double, a normal night's pay, every night and every day. And Solomon wasn't spending any money, he was just saving it all. And it was mounting up pretty quick. This went on, as I said, a good year. And suddenly, one evening, a phone call came in. The three girls had to move. Now, <laughs> let's just say they were, had to leave that house um, and their activities in the area. And they called Solomon and Solomon had to go around, uh, pick them all up and their stuff, and took them four hours to another area place called Southampton 
where they were going to set up uh, their business there. And that, sadly, was the end of them. Um, and Solomon knew that. He uh, sort of said farewell. And they exchanged details and emails and numbers and things, but that was that. And it was a sudden shock to the system. He just had a year of really, really strong money. And it all came to an end. And he was back to normal, driving a cab at nights with all the drunken fools and idiots. And it was a huge, huge um, drop back down to earth. And over the next two months, Solomon actually started getting quite depressed with this, that the life had changed. He'd had the hedonistic time in Thailand, loved it, got it out of his system, fallen for a girl, broke up, had three good friends for a year, lots of money, and he started getting depressed. Now, he knew he had to snap out of this, but he just could not face driving that taxi every night with all the fools. And he came to the decision that he would pack his stuff up, get rid of the rented accommodation. He didn't have many belongings. Get rid of all the rented, uh, all the stuff he had. And his taxi, it was all paid for. So he thought he'd rent that out. He got a good friend to look after it. And that would give him a bit of an income. And he'd tot up everything, sell any bits and pieces, and he's going to go travelling. So he did. He sold everything. Um, put a couple of personal things into family home and rented the taxi out, totted up, and he had in his bank account, well, he had about $15,000. No, it was more because the exchange rate was different. So about eighteen thousand dollars. So he put some in a, a savings account for emergency when he came back, and he put about twelve thousand, ten thousand pound into his main bank that he could use abroad. And he thought he's going to go back to Asia. He's going to maybe have a wander around and do Cambodia, Vietnam, come back into Cambodia and across to Laos. Have a look in Miramar if he could, um, and Thailand, and maybe a bit of Malaysia. He thought he'll go round, and his estimated trip was going to be a year. Uh, now, back in those days, again, this would have been around about 2000, 2001. You could get airplane tickets then that were a year open ticket, so that's what he did. Um, Got a ticket, one year open, so no fixed return date. He was going to be, on when he landed, he was going to go to Thailand first. He was going to be on tourist visas back then. Again, they're different than today. Back then, it was a one-month tourist visa. You extended it for a month at the immigration. Then you had to leave the country, start again, get another month and so forth. So it was a tourist visa, um, which we, you gained in those days when you landed. They just gave you it when you landed, so he didn't have to go to the embassy in the UK. It was just a case of fly there, get the stamp on arrival. So he said his fond farewell to family and friends and rented the taxi out. Stuff gone, money in the bank. Solomon's off again. But this trip is not going to be a hedonistic trip for him. He didn't. He he doesn't want that, but he just wants to see. Is there something in Asia for his future? Could there be something there that will change his future, shape his future? And off he goes, gets a bus to London, to Heathrow Airport. Um, Travelling light, had a rucksack and a small, which was a cabin bag, 10 kilo bag, but, and a rucksack. That was it bit of a broken mobile phone and a uh, bit of money in his pocket and off he went headed off left London Heathrow and took off for a year 
there we go that's so Solomon's Tales season two episode one I hope you're glad he's back but this will give you the journey we're still calling him Solomon but this will give you the journey where he goes up to a certain bar guys that follow me I understand anyway thumbs up if you can share subscribe we're I think just about to hit or just hit 6,000 subscribers so thank you and I'll see you on the next video bye bye